If you're ready to experience more peace and joy in your life, if you want to feel more comfortable in your own skin, and if you're ready to discover and expand on your energetic gifts and personal power, you're in the right place. So here's your host, Kelly Sparta. Welcome back to Spirit Guides. I'm your host, Kelly Sparta. I'm here as always with my best friend in Boquete and my fellow co-host, Catherine Loranger. We are both spiritual business coaches, and we want to talk to you today about how to take your, how to recognize when you are in burnout because crispy crittering is not the way to run your business. And so I recently had a message from one of my students. So I have a spiritual coach certification program where I teach people how to run my program. And one of my students in that program, the the first the first thing I have them do is the program that they're going to learn how to run. And the first thing in that program is is self-assessment. Uh, they, they do these questionnaires about how their life is. And she said that she did not know until I responded to her initial self-assessment, she didn't know that she was burned out. And she realized very quickly how burned out she was when she finally acknowledged that that was what was happening. And, and that comment made me go, oh my God, we need to move this episode up in the, in the, in the production schedule because it's so important for people to understand about burnout. And so that's why we're having this conversation today. So Catherine, you and I have both been through our own burnouts Mm -hmm. so much. Mm -hmm. You want to talk about yours and then I'll talk about mine. Sure. Yeah. And, you know, and just before I do share that, I want to just kind of make the point that, you know, that in this case with your student and certainly, and I know in my own lived experience, it's not like you go, it's not like you flip a switch and things are like totally like oh, amazing and then you're burnt out. It's like this like really subtle kind of slow process. So what happens is that it becomes normalized along the way and all of a sudden you're you're you know you're kind of in burnout burnout and it's become your new normal because it has been so slow typically so slow and insidious. So if you know if as you're listening to the episode you're noticing like oh wow that's me just it's okay right just like the recognition is is where you start with being able to do something about it so one of the things about me is that i have been in the past a bit of a perfectionist people pleaser a little codependent there kelly's like can't relate can't relate (laughs) so you know i'd been in in a position at a large institution where my Fs, the Fs that I gave, which was all of them, was not equivalent to the corporate culture. And so I there was a there was a mismatch. There was a total mismatch in terms of the politics, in terms of just kind of how people survived in that environment. And so I was younger at the time and didn't didn't really have the understanding of what was going on and so i personalized it i took it as i you know i need to work harder i need to do this i need to do that i need to fix it i need to contort myself i need to so that was in 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 an institutional organization where i was you know an employee and i remember i ended up going on on a stress leave i got quite depressed as a result of the burnout and it wasn't until I was actually talking to a mental health professional who said, oh, yeah, I see a lot of people from that institution in my office. It's it's actually how you're feeling is a function of the environment that you were in. And it was this huge aha moment for me where I didn't necessarily have to personalize it anymore. It wasn't that I had been wrong or done wrong or you know, been ineffective. And absolutely, I'm I'm not saying that it it was all them. There was nothing that I had to do. There was definitely patterns about how I interacted in the world that I needed to shift. Yeah. So that was kind of a little bit of my story. And Kelly, I don't know if you want to jump in. I'm going to jump in because, you know, I, I was so unaware of my burnout level that I actually went to the doctor back in, I want to say this was like 2003, uh, 2002. No, this would have been pre pre walkabout because I I 
got really de-stressed on the walkabout, but somewhere around 2001, 2002, I went to the doctor and she was like, oh my God, because I was telling her what happened in my life, right? And I was just like, my life is just constant change, right? And she said, if I could give you a month prescription to go to Canyon Ranch and do nothing, now Canyon Ranch is like a high-end spa resort retreat place. She said, I would do it if I could put that on your your medical insurance because you need that. And I looked at her like she was nuts. Mm -hmm. I'm like, this is just my life. What are you talking about? This is not unnormal. This is I can do all the things. Right. I can do all the things. Right. I was in my late twenties. I could just pull from the rest of my life and it would be fine. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So So, but even with that in my background and having done a lot of work on my own self-care and my own way of being and everything else, even with all of that, when we were moving here, right, we had just gone through COVID, which stressed me right the hell out. And we had, so COVID was a trauma for everybody. And then we had a deal with a truck that was, you know, where we almost had to file a restraining order against the people who owned the truck and stuff like that. And that was, that was a trauma. And then we had, and so a year later, oh, plus we had trees falling into our yard and the potential of everything. I mean, it was, we had stuff, right? So by the time a year later goes by and we're getting ready to move here, we're like having to divest ourselves of everything we own except for six suitcases and the dog, right? Because that's when we moved to Panama, we sold everything. And, and you know, get through that, get through the estate sale, get through the house sale, get through driving the dog three days to, to Florida. So you'd only have to be on one flight because he's an older dog and, you know, all of the things and then coming into a new country and, having to navigate our way through that in the middle of protests that were shutting down so much of the roads and stuff like that. And then we caught COVID the moment we arrived. Thank you, Florida. And, and, and we were down with COVID for a month. So we were freaking fried by the time we actually, you know, and then we had at the minute we were done with COVID, we had to find a house and a car and, you know, (laughs) there was no break. Right. So mm-hmm. I, you know, I looked up and I'm like, what the hell happened? I was trying so hard to do everything well in advance so that it wouldn't be horribly stressful. But, you know, who was I kidding? Anytime you move, it's in mental health world, they say it's, you're a 10 out of 10 on the stress scale for a year. Now you move internationally and that's going to be even more because everything is different. And then, you know, when you've got, you're on the heels of COVID and everything else was just like, oh my God. So I looked back, I was like, I have good reason to be burned out, but I am not going to allow this to continue. Right. And so, you know, I began this process. My husband and I both began this process of taking an incredible amount of downtime. Now he's the house husband. So he does the cooking every day and cooking in the cleanup because I, this, I do this and he does that. And so he's still fried two years later, he's still trying to down downgrade his fry. And we're doing a lot to try and make that better for him, you know, but you know, I'm, I came out of it maybe six months ago, took me a year and a half to really recover. And I'm being very careful about how much I do. So there are days when I work for three hours and that's it. And, you know, if I start to feel a little crispy around the edges, I'm like, I'm done. Close the computer, walk away, you know? So the piece about this that you have to recognize is that there's a habit of overworking and it's cultural for the U S and, you know, there's this productivity, it's this toxic productivity right? And the idea that if you're not producing, you're not worth anything. And so with our value tied to our productivity, it becomes very easy to burn out because we want to create a sense of our value and we don't want to let people down. And if you've grown up in an environment where your needs were not paid attention to or made a priority or even acknowledged, then it's very easy to just sacrifice everything you are on the altar of other people's happiness, right? It's just, it's awful. 
So, you know, today we want to talk about what are the symptoms of burnout and how do you recognize them in yourself? And then we're going to talk about recovering from burnout. So we're going to do that too. Okay. So I'm going to, I'm going to do the first batch and then you do the second batch and we'll, we'll go from there. Okay, Catherine. So yes, Kelly. (laughs) I <laughs> <Aye, aye>, captain. I <laughs> captain. So the beginning for me in particular is social activities start to feel like another to do on your list. It's they're they're not social, they're not fun, they're just a to do. Now, for some of you who are ADHD or introverts, this may be a thing in general. <laughs> So this may not be an indicator of burnout for you, but for those of us who are extroverts and like social interactions, when it starts to feel like a to-do and you go, then you know you're burning out. The next piece is you stop all social communication and do only what is mission critical. So your all your friends fall off the list and everything that's not crucial falls off the list and that's it. And, and then you go into hermit mode. And it's like, nope, I'm going to sit in my house. I'm going to hide. I'm going to, you know, do whatever I do to compensate. So for me, that's watching, you know, binge, binge watching Netflix or, you know, something like that. I, I've done reading before, you know, some people do shopping, some people are doing drinking or drugs or having lots of sex. You know, there's lots of ways to, to do that, but there, these are ways that we compensate for our misery, Right. You're also hypersensitive to things not going as you planned, which for for the control freaks out there may also be just 